you know, there were already taxes collected from this, but I haven't seen any litigation and it hasn't stopped any other municipalities from enacting ordinances similar to this. In the appeal process, just so you're aware, that's what checks and balances to ensure that uh, it's not only my opinion. If I want to push something through, it does give uh, a taxpayer an opportunity at least to have a sounding board or you know, authority to overrule my decision. But again, we have to remember too that uh, if you're criminally negligent, you're probably going to be charged with crime and then you know, actual cost recovery is very, very limited. But the city does have a provision for uh, lien rights on the property, which we didn't act if we felt that there was, there was benefit. Yeah, the individual property is <laughs> largely untested waters. Truthfully, cost the term cost recovery has been around for a long time. It's been applied uh, in hazardous materials incidents with some pretty good success, uh, but this is kind of an expanded version. Um, it's starting to occur more and more across the country, and it's all based on the current financial circumstances. So to think that it wouldn't be challenged at some point, it will at some point. Um, but at least uh, by taking these steps, we do have uh, several ordinances in place that support our position and uh, have uh, outlined in the appeal process for consideration. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay, very good. Thank you, Chair. I'm 22, um, which Dave will also speak to momentarily. I just want to kind of set the stage for the uh, the history. Um, maybe a year ago or so, the city of Taylor uh, took this property back on a um, on some uh, past due tax situation, and um, we then found out that what appeared to be an entire parcel or entire development had been subdivided, and there were in fact four separate owners to this. Um, then. What, what kind of triggered this is somebody reached out to us and said, the city has this piece of property, we may be interested in making an offer, which we found out that even if we wanted to sell it, in the current situation, we really couldn't. So we reached out to Dave, and I'll let Dave kind of take it from there and, and um, explain the rest of what's happening on, on number 22. Sure. Uh, just to follow up with the mayor on a little bit of a history here, this is uh, the Tipper's Edge Condominium, which is a failed condo development. Uh, on the other side of Home Depot on Goddard Road here where you see a couple of buildings that are they are supposed to be residences. They almost look like, like, like residential business type buildings. We don't there. own those, right? We do not. We do not own those. And uh, with the city acquiring the vast majority of the properties there, because it's a condo, it's really a unique situation, right? And this is, this is what has happened across the state and other communities that I've been involved with in Taylor. What happened here is the, the developer went belly up and abandons the project. All right, by the time they had abandoned the project, the condo development, in this case roads were put in, utilities were put in, and then each condo unit gets a tax ID number. It's a little bit separate than a, a different parcel because the tax ID numbers are assigned to the units that are there but it's different, it's a condo and not like a subdivided plat. So what happens is, is that when, everybody, when the developer goes belly up, there's taxes that are owed on the property, goes into foreclosure, ends up at the Wayne County tax sale. Now you've got an interesting conceptually, conceptual problem where you've got these tax ID parcel numbers that are up for sale at the auction, but they are really part of an entire condo development and connected to each other. So this puts us in a little bit of a more unique situation than just various homes or properties getting into a, 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 a tax foreclosure lien sale and people buying it. And what happens though is people go down to the tax sale. In Wayne County, they just have their tax ID numbers, they have the amount that's owed, and they just you know sell it to whoever wants it, you know, wherever they can make the money. So what happens is, is these individuals may or may not know or be aware or absolutely clear of what they are purchasing as far as a condo. They may think they're just, well, in this case, it's attached condo, so presumably they were aware that it was a condo. But they think they're getting something 
free and clear, almost like you're buying a house or on a subdivided plot. So what happened in this case is that the property went into tax foreclosure, and then you've got the two buildings at the front entrance actually have, the buildings one and three, actually have four units each. And uh, one group uh, company, an LLC, bought six of the units, and then another couple bought two of the units. I guess intending they saw that there was a building there they could get it for probably very cheap. I'm not sure exactly what they paid for it. And they ended up buying those. Nothing else has been built. And that's where nobody else bought the rest of the stuff, and then the city ends up, really, with this property that ends up falling in their lap, or its lap, our lap, whatever it is. Okay? And then at that point in time, now we own this property. We've got to figure out what can we do. And that's when the mayor got me involved and said, hey, look at this issue, what can we do? And that's when we started talking about what I just explained to you about you're not, well, we've got some issues here, okay? And the history of the property is that it was changed <coughs> to residential or condo, multifamily residential for the condos. And then when the PRD expired, the development agreement expired, then it's supposed to revert back to the regular zoning, which is in fact commercial and not residential. Well, several years ago, um, the city did, in fact, rezone it commercial. So not just relying on the um, it going back automatically or reverting. So we have rezoned it back to commercial. So now we've got a situation where the city owns actually 80, 80 units out of an 88-unit condo. <coughs> and we've got eight co-owners, actually two different co -owners. So the figure is, what can we do? Can we sell the property? Can we develop it? Can we do it? And I told the mayor, I said, well, the first thing we have to do is we have to undo this to a certain extent because we've got a master deed that's recorded with the Register of Deeds that dictates how and how the property can be developed, which essentially says a condo plan, attached condo plan. The tax ID numbers? Yeah, by the tax ID number. Well, by the tax ID number. But by the tax ID numbers, we actually own 80 of the 88 right. units. Right. All right. So what we did to come up with a plan here is we decided to, because we are now the vast majority owner of the condo development, take a look at the master deed. And the master deeds always provide for an amendment, for expansion or contraction. Always, usually. They usually do. And this one, this one did, in fact, have provisions for a contraction of it. And so what we decided to do as condo members now of, the, of this uh, uh, development is, and which I've prepared for you, is because we own 90%, you need over 60%, amend the master plan for the master deed for the condo. Actually take this square and cut it down to a much smaller, to a 12-unit condo complex which leaves these other owners in there, because that's what they purchased the condo. And basically take out our big portion of land, the 90% of it that we own, and take it out of the master deed. So then we have a regular meets and bounds plot of land that we can subdivide, sell, develop, do whatever we want with it. So that is what has been presented to you, is taking, because we own it, and because we are the majority owner, the vast majority owner, we want to amend the master deed to take our property out. Now, in what we did, you'll see the drawings are really not a depiction of what our land is. The drawings in there are what the new condo plan is, which is a 12-unit condo plan. And there are a couple of things that are in there. Is number one, the first three buildings, one of which is not built. The detention pond and the storm going out. The reason why those are left in there is because they are all part of the master deed in what must be built without undoing the entire uh, master deed, which would be difficult for us to do because people do own condos. Okay, go ahead. Just to interrupt you real quick. Yeah. Now, are those, were those tax ID number, are those units sold in, are they, is there, you're saying there's one more unit that's gotta be built, correct? To uphold the deed. Are yes. those already sold or are we gonna build the units or what's, no, we, well, I, I don't believe, I mean, first thing we're doing is pulling our property out. But right. right, if you look at this diagram, right, uh, you've got, this is, th this amendment is actually recreating the condo plan to be this development. These two buildings are built, owned by two different individuals. These four units right here that is not built, 
we actually own those four units. Okay. Those are not pulled out because those are a must be built under the master deed. Okay. Frankly, once we pull our property out here, we can do what we want with our property here. We will still technically be one third owners in this condo development. I gotcha. okay. And you know what we do or not do at that point in time would be a lot depending on what we're gonna do here okay. with, with, with these individuals. 